Hey, right, what's up everybody? So today's interview, right, uh, is something that I've been quite uh, excited to have, right? I've been observing uh, our dear friend Thomas, huh? Um, to go through his own financial planning journey, right, for such a long time. And I think right now he's in a space where um, he's being appreciated, right, for the value he has given, the, the hard work he has been given for such a long time, as being constantly featured, right, with multiple stages. I'm so excited to have Thomas on. So yeah, man, Thomas, uh, good to have you on. And before we begin, you want to share a little bit about yourself, a bit about what you do, right, before we begin the rest of this interview, man. Yeah, great. So thanks, Mike, uh, Mark, for this opportunity itself. Lah. So for me, uh, I began my wealth advisory journey back when I was a student in NTU. So back then, I started out already. So it has been on a journey for around eight years. And also along the way, I also start uh, side businesses to complement it, lah, specifically in the coaching, training and speaking field itself. Uh, have a few awards, thankfully, here and there. But most important of all, right, is I managed to have a life that I'm looking for, a life where every day I wake up, I feel fulfilled. Lah. So yeah, hopefully I can share what I know, some of my learning lessons with all of you. Yeah, man. So I guess I guess the the first kickstart the 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 interview, right? But I think most people in Singapore, right? Yeah, most people start financial planning. They're always afraid. Oh, there might be a stigma against financial mm. planners and stuff. So I think when you first started as a student, right? Like, why did you decide to embark on a journey? And mm. uh, do you address? Do you have some of those fears? Can you share a bit of a journey of how you began, right? Initially, when you were a student back then. Mm, great question. So started out right that I already wanted to do business already. So even when I was in university, I was exploring entrepreneurship already. The question is what business to do. So I actually dabbled into a few businesses like uh, digital marketing, speaking, whatsoever. And wealth advisory is one of it. Lah. So wealth advisory, we actually position it as a business because we get to run the operation. We get to run how things are going. We get to run how we want to market our services. And what is important for me at that point in time uh, is that I get a business with low startup costs, with low risk. Because some business, I mean, they are great, FMP, all this. But as a student, I am not able to take up such amount of uh, financial risk itself. So wealth advisory becomes something that is suitable. And after that, I did dive further into it. And I realized that that's something that I enjoy. And you are right to say so that, you know, a stigma has always been there. Fortunately, along the ways, especially in the current generation, it's getting more and more uh, accepting la, because mm. people are starting to see the importance of financial planning and financial planners as themselves, right? They are starting to position themselves more as an educator rather than a salesperson. Mm. So fortunately, right? Yes, the stigma is starting to uh, dip, uh, taper down already. That said, at the end of the day, there will always be a stigma there. And this is mm. where you want to really deep dive into your personal mindset, right? What are you afraid of in terms of the stigma? Is it because mm. your friends are judging you? Is it because you are afraid of losing your friends? Is it because mm. uh, maybe your family feel that this is not a career for you to be proud of? Mm. Different people, they would have uh, different reasons to you know stay away from this career itself. And I think it's important individually, right, that we deep dive into what is the reason and then we reframe it accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I was going to that like so you want to share a little bit maybe of what were your personal struggles, right? You know, or fears, right? And how did you personally overcome some? Because I, I'm sure it wasn't my wasn't easy unless right for you it might have been a very like no brainer, right? They just went on a bit. You want to share a bit about your own uh journey as well? Mm, okay, so back then, right, I actually have a huge apprehension of approaching those who I know, you know, like mm. close friends, family, all this in terms of uh sharing about financial planning. So when I first started out, right, I do a lot of co-market. Even until today, right, I also do a lot of co-market. Mm. But then I started to realize, right, the reason why I have that thinking, right, is because I go in with the premise that I am like kind of trying to sell them something. I am going in with the premise that I'm there to do a sales. But mm. after that, I reframe it accordingly, right? Like I'm actually there to educate them. And even if they are not interested, then it's fine. At least I have mm. stayed with my responsibility of educating them. So mm. on my social media, all this, right? I am always constantly educating because mm. right now I see, right? I'm just sharing, right? At the end of the day, whether you want to take up the solutions or not, it's up to you. And when I go into that mindset, surprisingly, more and more people, they themselves come to me and ask me about it. You know, especially when I go out with din uh, dinner with friends, family members, they all tell ask me the question. And right, they don't have the mindset that, oh, Thomas is a salesperson. I don't want to go out dinner with him. Because mm -hmm. they know that I am really just there to share and I really don't force a seer down. 
the person itself. So that is for me personally. La. I mean, uh, uh, there are other limiting beliefs that other people are facing and just to share so that uh, I can value that maybe those who are encountering this. You know, some people, they don't see this as, they see this as at the end of the day, a sales career, right? Just selling products itself. But think about it, everyone is doing sales one way or another, right? Even for people who are finding a full-time corporate job, they are selling their resume, they are selling their skill set so that they can land a higher paying job, they can land their uh, dream job itself. When we find a girlfriend, when we find a partner, we are also selling ourselves one, one way or another, mm. right? So sales really make this world go round and it's really up to you, right, to position yourself in a manner that is as a professional salesperson, not just a salesperson, not just on the street selling any random things, mm. a professional salesperson. What differentiates a professional salesperson? Someone who knows inside out of what he is selling. Mm, I think the framing of just trying to sell people to, 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 to take their money, right? And then get a bit of a cut. But as, as compared to value adding first, right? Uh, reframing in terms of uh, being an educator first. And it, I think that's what helped a lot of people. And speaking of which, right? Because I, I think some people have been asking, like Thomas, hey, I mean, it's easy, right? To say that, okay, uh, your content should be value adding and stuff. But there's so many financial planners out there. That, right like how do you ensure that some of your content and what you share right uh, hopefully stands out right from the rest of the market right maybe that's one and number two right uh, in terms of how do you um add a lot more value to people rather than just the usual things of what everybody say oh buy you must save more you must buy buy less right uh, buy the stock when it's low sell high like, like how do you differentiate yourself from that perspective because everybody else is doing it Mm, right. So to start off, right, in the first step itself, I think it's very important that we find a niche, that we find a positioning that is specialized. Instead of trying to share every single thing, right, we niche down to one. So personally, for me, it's more towards the investment and wealth creation part, right? After we establish ourselves there, then that's where we can have a variety of other content to value add even more. So for me, right, I don't just share about finance stuff. In fact, nowadays, I share a lot of personal development yes. stuff as well, right? And I, in terms of finance, right, I don't just share about products. I share, I mean, in terms of like a recent budget for Singapore itself, a summary of it, any policy or governmental changes. I share all these things, even though it does not lead me to a sale. It does not lead me to selling any potential product because it has nothing to do with products at all. I also mm -hmm. share because that will really position me as an educator. If I only share about products, 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 then yeah, I'm just like any other salesperson itself. But when I'm sharing things outside of the product, yet useful for financial advisory or life as a whole, right? Then yeah, that's how people start to see that hey, you are really there to value it. You are really there to educate. And I will always say that it's really more about consistency than intensity. Right, we see of people who maybe are very active for one two weeks. Then after that, they just disappear from social media. Mm -hmm. I would rather that people be uh, less uh, intense, but be consistent. You know, always be there, posting, 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 and that that's what we call the mere exposure effect, right? Yep. When uh, people start to see that hey, you are always there, and sooner or later, yeah, they will uh, start to establish that connection between you and financial advisory. And also another thing is I encourage people to be omnipresent, you know, don't be just on one single platform, right? Be on multiple platforms, you know, you already create the content already. So why not just spread it out on different platforms, right? Rather than just on Facebook or on Instagram. In fact, I will go to an extent to even share it on WhatsApp broadcast, which yeah. is uh, very effective for me because uh, I realized WhatsApp is still a tool where people open it more frequently. So yeah, be omnipresent as well. Consistency. Wow, yeah. I love it. I think I think the one of course you find a niche, right? But after they find a niche in terms of a, a specialized target audience you want to, right? And then of course adding more value rather than just whatever you're trying to promote. And then I think obviously, right, you want to amplify, right, uh, the kind of content impact that you do. And one thing that I will talk about consistency later, right, bro. I'm very interested to find out your own philosophy and your own thoughts. Uh, mm -hmm. but so one thing that 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 I, I felt right made you stand out a lot is that you you join a lot of networks, events, mm. right? Part of those massive communities. Maybe, mm. but first, I gotta share a bit of like, okay, besides financial planning, what are some other organizations, communities, uh, uh, memberships are you actually part of? Just want to share, just want to get ideas. So, oh, great question. So, I, I scare, I share ideas, I scare people. <laughs> so, actually, I'm in a lot of communities. La. So, I will share those that I'm more active one. So, I am in Toastmasters, I am in People's Association, I'm in Rotaract. I also am uh, recently in the Growth Success Club Network 
and a few interest groups for Meetup itself. Lah. But here's the thing that I want to emphasize on. When we join all these networking sessions, personally, what I feel uh, is that we should not go in or with the focus of doing business. We should go in genuinely with the focus of building relationship. And to make that easy, they must be having activities that you enjoy doing. If the networking session right is focused on activities that you don't enjoy doing, for example, fishing, I'm like, not someone who really goes fishing, right? I feel very difficult to build relationship with the people there because it is really not my interest. The people are of a different frequency with me. But if it's things like public speaking, board games, and other fun activities that I love, then when I go to this networking session, right, naturally I will have the interest of speaking to the people there and naturally I'll start to build strong connections. And the people will feel that I am genuine and authentic. And even in the worst case scenario where I don't close any sales, don't do any business, at least I'm doing something that I love. But ironically, uh, because I go into this mindset, uh, the business actually comes naturally. Well, I think that... That's, that's fun. At least you just do things that you enjoy, lah, right? Basically, right? As in, exactly. you put yourself out there with some hobby groups, right? Uh, those are for you, definitely speaking, right? Person development, board games, right? And then that happens. And uh, for some of the j- committees, right? Uh, uh, I think you also were part of like the committees uh, and like the 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 board. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure how you Correct. actually... The, the leadership. Uh, the leadership. The leadership spaces, right? Uh, was it diff- particularly difficult for you to get to that space or for you it was a very natural thing because you liked it so much, you started volunteering, you started being more like... like how's your approach to getting to be a bit more influential in those uh, communities and clubs? Mm, very good question. So here's the thing. Yeah, it was because I was... And I am so interested in all these things, right? That right. I am really doing it out of passion, right? That people will start to see my genuine intention, right? And people start to support me to go up all these leadership roles itself. Mm. That said, take up these leadership roles only if you feel that you have the bandwidth for it. Because it is not necessary. I mean, if you want to build influence all this, right? You don't need a position, right? Leaders without position, they can be influential as well. So for me, it's really, uh, I feel that I want to take up the leadership responsibility. So not necessarily because I want to be more influential. Even without leadership roles, right? I see some of the members, they're actually very influential. Mm. But you are right to say so that because uh, I love the activity so much, right? It becomes a natural progression for me. Uh. Okay, right. So just for the natural love and passion, I think the... The big question is, because I do feel that some people, when they talk about networking and stuff, uh, they'll be like, oh, I'm very shy, how can I value? Mm. But if you just join things that you naturally like, uh, like, hey, it's going to be a lot easier, right? Than trying to think 20,000 other problems, right? Uh, where you can just be enjoying yourself. So I love that. So, so right. moving... Sorry, from- uh, before uh, that, uh, just to yes. add on something. Uh, yeah. So this may seem very unbelievable, but I'm actually highly introverted. <laughs> Legit, I'm not even kidding. A lot of networking sessions, right? I will sit in one corner, quiet one. And those who... In Chinese, we call this mantra, slower to warm up. So sometimes, that's why I don't like those rapid business networking sessions because I am not very uh, conversational in a long uh, in a long way yeah. during that setting itself. So I will like speak one line, then okay, bye-bye, I did. <laughs> Can't even be a relationship. But I use that weakness, right, as a strength itself. Because while I am not so good at all these rapid, long-term, long conversations, right, when it comes to a long-term relationship building, right? When I'm there for a few sessions where people start to talk to me, when I start to open up, right? The conversation goes deeper. And then they will be like, well, this person don't really talk so much. One. And then today he's talking to me sincerely, listening to what I have to say, all this. That is how relationship is built. And in my opinion, relationship needs time to build either way, right? Mm. So it's really about using your weakness as your strength. Yeah, no, I, I think I love that. That means you're also playing in your own strengths, lah, right? Which is finding areas where you can afford to be long-term. Because some areas I know, right, uh, that they are looking for those that can call, you can call message, you can call talk to them ASAP, right? Which might not be in, uh, even mine, right, areas of expertise where we don't like to have those rapid fire uh, yeah. communication portion. Yeah, I love that. And so moving on, right, to something post probably as important, right, which is, so I think something mentioned at the start, which I love is that you are looking forward, right, every day to waking up, right, mm-hmm. to do your stuff, to do your work. So, um, you actually a little bit about, um, first on that portion, which is what, mm-hmm. what, why do you enjoy what you do, right? Because there's still going to be a lot of work involved. So, you actually a bit about that before we begin some of the more, uh, uh, deeper questions, right, in mm-hmm. terms of energy, focus, and productivity. Right, I, I love to share about this because in my opinion, I believe I found the answer. <laughs> Self-praise a bit. So, 
what I always uh, tell my coaches is regardless of whether is it a business or a full-time job whatsoever, right? They need to have these three P's in it, right? P's, mm. okay? First P is purpose, second P is passion, and third P is pay, all right? So pay is the most straightforward one. Lah. I mean, mm. especially in Singapore, we, we need the money <laughs> to survive, at least even thrive, right? Okay, now moving on to purpose. Purpose is what we find meaning in life, what gives us that fulfillment. So some of you will probably hear about the seven levels of why all this, right? To keep it short, go Google about it, seven levels of why you will eventually identify the purpose. So some people is... Uh, maybe they want to build quality relationship. Some people is they prioritize growth and breakthrough. Some people is that they simply want to have a free life. That's their purpose. For me, is to impact lives. Uh, just to share a little bit. So mm -hmm. I always want to give value. I always want to be there for people. That is my life purpose itself. And then we have passion. What do we enjoy doing? So for passion, right? Some people enjoy maybe sports. Some people perhaps enjoy more towards creative works like myself. Some people enjoy writing. Some people enjoy uh, IT-related matters itself, right? Mm. So for us to have that ultimate level of fulfillment, I believe that we need a career or a business that help us achieve these three Ps. And let mm. me elaborate a little bit more. You see, uh, being a fitness instructor, right, can help to impact lives, right? You help people to lose weight. You help people to be healthy. And you can probably earn quite a bit also. But mm. I can never ever be a fitness instructor, not just because of how round I am, <laughs> but because it is not my passion. Mm. Right? It is mm. not something that I am particularly really, really excited about. So that is something that I cannot find uh, alignment with. Lah. Yeah. Mm. But to take it a next level, for us to find these three P's, uh, sometimes it can be like strike total like that. Sometimes mm. it can be really, really very difficult. I mean, let's be practical, right? But here's the thing, these three Ps, right, need not be something that you find. It can be something that is created from where you are at already. So let me give you an example. Let's say an auditor, you know, have to work long hours. You know, the job may be a little bit mundane, but be a little bit repetitive. And this person enjoys creative work. Yet at this point in time, he's not ready to find us other careers. So how can he align creativity to an auditor job. Well, I mean, he can create new systems in which can help him to be more productive at work. Mm. He can be creative in the sense of, you know, designing his workplace, making it colorful whatsoever. He can be more creative in terms of how he sends the email to his clients whatsoever. At mm. least there's an element of creativity in that. And if let's say we really are not able to find that passion out of the work, Another level is to, you know, outside of work, right, find something that we are passionate about to supplement, yep. lah, right? So that is the solution itself, which is in the sense that we do not need to always be finding these treaties. Sometimes we can create it out of what we already have. Yeah, I, th I think that that is a, a testament to the whole power of responsibility, right? Which is we don't wait for things to happen to us. We actually create it one way or another, whereas in the job, outside of the job, right? But basically, if we don't wait, la, we don't be passive about it. And I think that's something that a lot of people that uh, found their passion, they didn't find it, they actually created it on their own, right? So same thing for you. You managed to find a way to, yes, generate income for your true wealth uh, advisory, but in a way where you enjoy what you do, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think that's uh, extremely powerful itself. So speaking of that, right? So... um. Because for you are doing a lot of things, right? You're doing well advisory, you are posting a lot of content on Facebook, social media, right? You're joining events, you're having fun, right? Mm. Um, you share your overall approach to managing maybe a bit of your time, your energy, just for some people who might be like, Wow, how come Thomas is doing so much? Ah? Mm. Right? How can I possibly be someone like Thomas where I can get so many things done but still get paid and still enjoy myself at the same time? Mm. All right, so I must make a disclaimer that even before all these time and energy management strategies, right? It is that fulfillment, right, that allow me with all this already. Because if I'm not fulfilled, right, in my opinion, no matter how much time and energy management, right, I am not able to do it as well. So the ultimate level that you need to find first is that fulfillment with what you are doing. Mm. Then there's the next level where we come in with the time and energy management. Lah. So I mean, uh, I, I, I am following a few strategies. I mean, even for uh, Mark sharing and some of the personal mm. development coaches sharing itself, you know, things such as uh, finding 
when it is your peak productivity period and put in the more intensive work there, that's one of it, you know, uh, constantly stay hydrated, go exercise, and also a big fan of this, which is creating an environment, a productive environment, right? When we talk about environment, it uh, includes social environment, the people you hang out with, hang out with yeah, positive, yeah. empowered people, the physical environment, put yourself in a productive environment. So like, let's say last time, right, my workplace is nearer to the bed, so I end up sleeping. Uh -huh. So now I need to shift uh, very far away from the bed itself. A digital environment, I remove all the mobile games from my phone itself because uh, those can be quite distracting. And also our mental environment, what are the thoughts and beliefs that we are constantly feeding ourselves, right? So environment itself is also another thing, right? And I'm also a practitioner of uh, task batching. You know, like let's say I'm using my computer now already. I do all the tasks that need computer, because I'm already using it already, right? So the efficiency is there, man. rather than I close the computer, do other tasks, then come back to it again, right? Mm. So uh, in, in terms of meeting clients, I mean, in this industry, uh, it's really about meeting clients. So like, let's yeah. say I'm meeting clients in the West, right? I'll put them all together during the same period of time. So that's the efficiency there also. Though. Nice, I love it. I think those are some very quick fire. I think the way Thomas mentioned it uh, sounds very casual, but it's freaking powerful, right? Physical environment, right? Changing it, right? Being aware of your thoughts and beliefs, right? I think these are some things that we can all take away from. And okay, so I think one thing, uh, this is based on personal opinion, uh, Thomas, right? So you have you have mixed around with uh, people from the personal development space, speakers, entrepreneurs, you have your own communities, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Based on your opinion, what are some um, observations of um, some people that might have attended the same program, workshop, seminar as you or uh, received the same information as you, right? But achieve drastically different results, right? So some might be pretty mediocre, stuck, right? Not at the level of progress they want to be, right? Where some people, right, even like yourself, right? They can move fast and get the results they want, right? They can achieve whatever they want from whatever they learn. What do you think are some of the characteristics of traits uh, that you feel different shape, mm. right? Between both groups of people, at least from your own um, observations and opinions. Mm. Yeah, so here's the thing. I have a theory that nowadays uh, people like to sign up for causes and programs uh, because they are being marketed too well. <laughs> the program causes all these who are so attractive for all these, all these, all these bonus. So people don't sign up from the place of pain or pleasure, which I realize that uh, it is something that's a differentiator. Like, why do people take action, right? Either to go away from pain or to go towards pleasure. And this is something that they really need to think about, right? Before they sign up for a course or a program itself. What is the pain I am facing? If I am going to sign up for a weight loss program, right? The pain is that I look horrible. I don't have my abs. I feel lethargic, all this, right? And I will constantly remind myself about it, right? Before I sign up for the program. So I will be more motivated to follow it through. Because signing up for a program is easy, but whether do you apply what is being taught, right? It's a different thing. And I truly believe, right? That to the extent that pain is even more powerful than pleasure. So pleasure works as well, you know, pleasure like in terms of, oh, it will help me to achieve my results. Uh, ple uh, pleasure in terms of, uh, oh, now I am able to uh, connect with people more confidently like whatsoever. But if we go from the angle of pain, uh, what are you lacking right now? That is mm. not helping you to achieve your life purpose, right? To give you a very good example, why I am more motivated to keep healthy, right? Nowadays is because I realize that uh, if I have a short life, uh, how do I impact people? Mm, <laughs> right? I, I'm still now in the small in the Singapore zone. I haven't even go internationally uh, very regularly, which is what I want to do eventually. So mm. yeah, I, I'm afraid I'm not even able to make it with uh to my 40s, right? With my past habits. Uh, there was a period of time where I actually feel some uh heartache because I realized right one year I never exercise. Then that's why mm. I feel some discomfort in my heart during the COVID period. Mm. That's why right now I'm like more active in uh, my cardio or this not to look good i exercise not to look good i uh, just give a disclaimer i mm. exercise because i want to keep fit because that helps me to achieve my life uh, life purpose and i find that pain which is that if i don't do it right i have a short life yeah so nice. this is what i would encourage people to do like, when you sign up for causes all this right what is that pain what's that pain that you must overcome you must really feel it then you'll be motivated to do it as well right so this is the base level itself like. The top, uh, the the level on top of it, right, is I would say that they really, they don't really associate what they learn with how they can apply right away. And I'm a believer of applying as fast as you can because if you don't apply it right away, right, sooner or later you forget. Sooner or later it will just be chucked outside, right. So mm -hmm. immediately, right, if you learn something like a productivity hack from Mark, right, how can you apply it right that day? 
right? Or the next day itself, nice. right? And sooner or later, it will become a habit. Lah. I mean, uh, when we talk about habit formation, it's a whole new topic. You all can go read up on James Clear itself. But I will say that you need to find that association itself. Or else it is just like any words on mm. paper. Just uh, any uh, noises going across. Yeah, so well, I, I think those are two powerful tips. I think number one, um, yeah, it may, may you sound a bit sadistic to some people, but I feel it's absolutely true, right? Which is um, don't learn just because maybe you got sold on the on, on the spot by a speaker that speaks very well, right? Just feel like very formal, right? Or it's like, oh, it sounds like good to have, but I come from a space of what do I uh, really need right now? Be aware of it, right? What's my biggest challenges, struggles? What's my biggest uh, things that I feel I could improve on? And then come from a space, right? In terms of choosing what you want, because there are 20 million programs that we can buy, cause all right that we can go for and then number two right is how can we immediately apply right so instead of waiting until like one day before uh, one day after five days after ten days after right what can you take immediately uh, right and potentially apply uh to your life love it man i think it's a good good great tip man for thomas so i guess uh probably last question all right last question which i love to ask all my guests uh, so let's say uh, bro uh you had to restart everything from scratch right with whatever you know right now right? restart whatever you want from scratch and you had to um you were brought in um uh, uh, another city, right? But you don't know everyone, right? You don't have any resources, right? What will you possibly do in the first 30 to 90 days uh, to not only get back to where you are today, but even beyond that, right? To even bounce back beyond that. What are some of the specific steps, right? Strategies, right? Or things that you might take action on, right? Mm. To move up, right? As fast as possible. If let's say you're starting all over from scratch. Well, wow, fortunately, I'm prepared for this because I watch a lot of reality TV. <laughs> 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 yeah, come on, shows. Uh. The question because you land up in the place of nowhere, right? Like no resources, no network, no branding whatsoever, right? Yeah. So personally, I agree with what a lot of them did, which is to learn how to sell. I think that's something Grant Cardone did very excellently. He was part of this show, if I'm not wrong, it's called uh, Undercover Air or something. Yeah, yeah. Thing is you learn how to sell. When you learn how to sell, when you learn how to negotiate, you get you start to get the money already. Then that's how you start to scale whatsoever. But yeah, selling is really a very important skill and. Really, I know a lot of people may think that's sleazy whatsoever, but just think about it. Everyone is selling. It is really about how you sell in a professional way. And that is to really know your stuff, know how it value add. And then from there, right, if it is of immense value to the other person, right, there's no logic why the person won't get from you, correct? Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Nice, a little bit. So I guess uh, with that, right, that's a great answer in terms of selling communication, right? Uh, because uh, one thing I mean, yeah, I also learned way back, lah, right, was selling on the streets and stuff, uh, which is um, selling is a recession proof skill, right? It's an industry proof skill, right? Uh, you cannot never go broke, right? If you learn how to sell, man. But yeah, I guess with that, uh, where can uh, it's been a great interview so far, bro? So where do you think uh, some of the audience gonna find out more about you, right? Follow you, yeah, share a bit about where uh, how can they possibly connect with you, right? If they wish to find out more about what uh, Thomas, right, is doing right now. Yeah, so do connect with me. I am on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the same handle. Hello, Thomas Chen. And yeah, wish to learn from all of you as well. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I guess uh, probably last in five words for end of this interview for people out there, right, who might be like, okay, I do want to achieve some success, right? I do, I do find this interview really inspiring, right? But they're not so sure where to start. Any final tips, right, before end of this interview, bro? Where to start, is it? Just to yeah, work. right. Like any final words, any final tips? Where to start? I would say at the end of the day, right, what is most important for us uh, is to live our life purpose. Trust me, when you find that alignment, uh, your life change a lot. I did not share much about this interview, uh, but when I was younger, right, in my 20s at that time, right, I faced with a lot of crises, identity crises, water life crises whatsoever. But I am thankful that I faced with all this right, at an early stage. And that was when I realized and managed to find what my life purpose is, right? And it gives me so much answer. It helps me to elevate my performance. It helps me to find fulfillment. And it helps me to strengthen my relationship with other people. So right from the start, right, I would encourage all of you, right, to really go out, find what your life purpose is. And everything will be linked from there. Beautiful, man. Right, beautiful at the end of the interview. So again, thanks again, Thomas. So follow him. We'll put the links in the in the uh comments below, right? And uh we look forward to seeing you right in the next Master Mentors interview session. Right. Thanks again, Thomas, and thanks everybody.